If you are looking for the best military tactical knives, you are in the right place. We have tried to include in-depth information on military tactical knives in our video, which will be enough to fulfill all of your needs. All of them are maintaining their features, prices, quality, durability, and reputation of the manufacturer, and a real customer feedback. If you want to buy a military tactical knives, we think this list will be very worthy to you. Now, let's get started with the video. At the first position of our list, we have Boker Kalashnikov Auto. What's more tactical than a knife named after the world's most prolific assault rifle? Boker received the approval of Mikhail Kalashnikov, the father of the infamous Russian AK-47 rifle, to build knives under the Kalashnikov name before his passing in 2013. The Kalashnikovs are a line of push-button autos from the Boker Solingen line, German-built, and the Boker Plus line, Chinese-built that all feature similar handles and blade steels. The standard Kalashnikov is a simple flat crown drop point blade in OZ-8 steel, with aluminum handles with individual finger grooves and a grainy texture to increase grip. It retails for $40 and comes in a variety of configurations, dagger, tanto, reverse tanto, black coated or plain blade, partially serrated variants, and a few different handle colors. There are also a few upgraded versions in the $70-80 range. Most appealing is the 70th anniversary edition, which has a satin, Winnish drop point blade in CTS XHB steel, as well as some limited editions with Damascus blades in a Bowie or a Tanto configuration. All of them have a deep carry clip that's configured for right hand tip up carry only. They all offer a remarkable value for money and no nonsense automatic deployment for people that need it. Moving on to the next and number two with Spyderco Military. Most knife nuts give the nod to the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 colloquially referred to as the PM2, as the best egg knife out there. Capable of tackling big jobs and small with equal ease and polish. They're not wrong, of course. The PM2 is my answer to that weird hypothetical if you had to keep only one knife forever question some people like to ask. But its big brother, the military, is probably better suited to a tactical role, thanks largely due to its size. Stretching nearly 10 inches, from tip to bulb, when open yet only weight 4 1 slash 2 ounces, the military packs a ton of blade into a pocketable package. It weighs so little by sweating the details. The liners are nested inside the G10 scales and skeletonized, provide strength without weighing you down. All of the hardware, including the lanyard, all sits flush with the handles for smooth grip as well. One odd thing about the military, right hand tip down carry only, with a clip that spans the pivot screw. The military's blade shape is a long, thin fully flat ground clip point with a perfectly straight spine and a continuous curve to the edge that stretches out a full 4 compared to the PM2's 3.4 blade. Standard steel is CPM as third if for around $175, but you can also upgrade to CPM Sewn 110 and Blurple G10 scales for $191. There's also a fluted titanium military with intricately machined counter titanium scales and a frame lock for $225, but larger size and weight, 5.6 ounces doesn't match the high-speed low-drag ethos of tactical knives. The military is rock-solid but featherlight, a great slicing and piercing knife, and made from top-notch materials. The number 3 position is held by Emerson CQC-7. The CQC-7, close quarters combat, is the prototypical Emerson folder, with all of the things people love and hate about Ernest knives. Emerson makes a wide array of knives, but the 7 is arguably the most closely aligned with the brand. And there's a large number of variations of the CQC7. But perhaps the most tactical is the recent 7 Wolf Flipper variant, which features three, three different deployment methods. Primary is the Wave, Emerson's industry calling card, and arguably the fastest method of deploying a folding knife from the closed and concealed to the open, locked, and in hand position. There's a hook that protrudes from the spine of the blade towards the tip. That is, you draw the knife from your pocket grabs on the corner of the seam and pulls the blade open by itself. There's also a thumb disc, an unusual departure from the normal stud or hole most knives use, and new to this knife is the addition of a flipper tab. To aid in deployment, this version of the CQC-7 utilizes stainless steel GTC ball bearings for frictionless action as opposed to the normal 7's washers. The 7 does the unique trick of taking premium materials and appearing normal. Blade steel is upgraded to CPM S35 even from the regular 154 cam on this knife with a handsome stonewash finish that hides scratches. The 3.3 blade 
has a pronounced tanto tip with a long switch, and most characteristically, Emerson is chisel ground, meaning the primary and edge bevels are only on one side. It's said this is done to make the knife easier to sharpen in the field, although with S35 steel that seems like an unlikely event versus just sticking to the brand's core features. The CQC7 also uses full titanium liners underneath rough textured black G10, and the whole thing is held together with Phillips screws for the body and a large straight head screw for the pivot. Again, for ease of service, carry is right hand tip up only. Tip up is the only way the wave functions. It's not pretty, but it's a design that's been refined over decades to be useful and dependable in the field. Next at number four, we have Cold Steel Recon 1. Cold Steel is probably the mainstream knife company most closely associated with tactical knives. They make all kinds of crazy combat and self-defense oriented products. Push daggers, swords, a cue button that looks like a sharp eye, that kind of thing. But when it comes to actual rely on it, when it counts dependability and performance, Cold Steel's the real deal. Their line of folders that have been designed with input from Andrew Demko includes his triad lock design which is a modification of a lock pack that includes a stop pin fitted between the lock bar and the tang of the blade, which eliminates vertical blade play and reduces the effect of wear on the two surfaces. In practice, it's a very solid lock with a characteristic quack when it opens. The added strength of the triad lock makes tests that you wouldn't normally put a knife through, like batoning, less likely to damage the knife. The Recon 1 is beefy but fits well in the pocket two thick slabs of grippy G10 handle scales with two deep finger choils. Don't require the use of steel liners, so the handle is pretty thin in the pocket while still having solid ergonomics. There's a reversible tip-down carry clip that's set into a square recess for added stability. The blade on the Recon 1, like a lot of cold steels lineup, was recently upgraded from the old Standbios 8 steel up to Carpenter CTS XHB a very high-performance steel that's got interesting chemistry. Compared to an industry stalwart like Assertive, it's got a bit more carbon and chromium, but also portions of manganese, nickel, and silicone giving it great hardness and wear resistance. It's available as a spear point, clip point, like you see on Bowie knives or Tanto. All blades come black DLC coated and either plain edge, partially, or fully serrated. The Recon 1 isn't fancy. It doesn't flip on bearings or have mokuti anything. But it's ergonomic, tough as nails, has a top-notch blade steel, it's thin enough to disappear in your pocket, and it's yours for $100. A must-have. The number 5 position is held by ZT301. Yeah, you read that right. The ZT301 weighs more than half of a pound. This is what built the house of zero tolerance, ridiculously, meticulously overbuilt knives that you can bring into hell and back no worse for the wear. The ZT301 actually went out of production and is back for a brief sprint run because retailers and consumers alike were upset it was gone, despite its old age. The 301 is a co-design between Mick Strider and Ken Onion, and there's a lot going on to be certain. The blade is 3-3-4 long and cut from beefy 0.17 blade stock, made from CPMS third of steel, which was top of the heap when this knife was introduced. It features a dramatic recurve drop point shape, with a two-tone tiger stripe finish to the blade. It uses Kershaw's speed-safe-assisted open technology to get the big blade out, so there's no worries of sand or other grit getting into a bunch of ball bearings. Everything about the 301 is heavy-duty, and none more visibly than the pivot. Instead of a T10 screw, the 301 uses a 3-8 hex ball to secure the pivot, which you can adjust with pliers if you need to. The number 6 position is dominated by Hog X5. Hog is primarily known in the firearms industry for their gun grips, holsters, and other high-quality accessories, so it's a natural fit that their knives would have a tactical element to them. What sets Hog knives apart from other gun brand knives are two things. One, they actually make their own knives. Most all other gun branded knives are outsourced, and in fact Hog is now making H and case knives after Benchmade sold the rights and two. They are actually good. Anyone who's used a Smith and Wesson branded knife is familiar with this concept. The X5 is a design by Alan Alishowitz and its design is noticeable. Much like the X4 I reviewed previously, the X5 is not what you'd call a conventionally styled knife. Like that knife, you have a choice of two blade shapes and two sizes. Here, a spear point, although I'd say it's more of a harpoon point with a dip in the spine and a modified Warncliffe, highly modified. It has a compound grind with a thicker primary bevel towards the pivot, a reverse tanto tip, and a smooth concave curvature to the spine. 
Both blade shapes come in CPM 154 steel. A great mid-level stainless that's easy to sharpen and holds an edge pretty well. Moving on to the next at number 7 with CRKT M16KS. Kit Carson's M16 design has been the cornerstone of Columbia River Knife and Tools lineup seemingly forever. Selling in a bewildering array of variations, blade shapes, sizes, coatings, steel types, you name it, for a lot of people, your author included the M16 was their introduction to tactical knives. I remember the first time I held one. My uncle had found it under a seat in a used car he bought, with a cheeky one asterisk stamp on the blade. Feeling it pop open with the press of that flipper tap had me hooked, realizing there was a world beyond the Swiss Army knives I'd known. That was a decade and a half ago, and the M16 is still with us sadly. Kit Carson isn't. The M16 KS line is an update to this classic design, keeping all the things that make it a function-driven tool but adding a few updates. The KS is available in four variants that all share some common attributes but different sizes and blade shapes. The 1 and 2 are a spear point and a tanto around the 3 mark. The 3 is a 3.5 spear point, and the 4 is a beefy 3.9 tanto. For this new line, they've switched from a liner lock to a stainless frame lock. The handles are all stainless instead of the normal polymer scales with stainless liners, which also means the removal of the sometimes awkward lock secondary safety system. Like the normal M16, the ambidextrous thumb studs also serve as the blade stop in the open position. The KS line has also been upgraded to Sandvik 12 Vic 27 steel from the OS8 the M16 line normally uses, which offers slightly better edge retention as well as corrosion resistance. It's the same steel in the up-level swindle I reviewed, which I rather liked. He says, the number 8 position is held by Benchmade of Fall Roman 2. The bench made 9051 slash 9052, better known as the AFO Roman II, is a revision of the original AFO, which was Benchmade's first automatic knife. It's a push button automatic where the button is both the lock and the deployment method, and it's a favorite choice of military members serving overseas for its reliable one-handed deployment, solid build, and no-nonsense blade shapes. The AFO Roman II comes in two variants, the 9051 which is a drop point blade, and the 9052 which is an American Tanto shape. You have the choice of satin finish or black DLC coating on the blade, as well as the option of plain edge or partially serrated. All of all AIs use 154 cum stainless steel, a mid-range non-powder do everything steel that's an excellent balance between edge retention and sharpenability. Compared to the original AFO, the lock button is larger and has a stronger spring to prevent accidental firing, as is the sliding safety on the spine of the blade. The AFO's handles are made out of 6061 anodized aluminum with a series of grooves milled in, and are tapped for a four-position clip carry, unusual for an automatic. These knives spring open with a satisfying clack and have a reassuring pressure to the deployment button. They feel great to use, and they last a long time. They've also included a carbide glass breaker on the butt of the handle. In keeping with the military-oriented role, a full Roman II comes with a nylon sheath that is mall compatible if you prefer to carry it that way. Next at number 9, we have Kershaw Emerson Launch 5. When Kershaw launched the Launch series a few years ago, no one was prepared for how popular they would become. But it's not a tremendous surprise. There is a pretty significant gap in the automatic knife market in between affordable knives like the Boker Kalashnikov, $40, on this list and pricey high-end automatics like Protex, Microtex, and Benchmates. So combining Kershaw's well-regarded approach to quality, consistency, and value with a modern tactical automatic folder was a surefire win at a mid-range price. It's even more of a win when you include a design from Ernest Emerson in the mix, a man who knows a thing or two about tactical knives to be sure. The Launch 5 is visually identifiable as Emerson's work, but also as a modern Highline Kershaw product with high-quality finishing and details. Blade steel on the Launch series is CPM 154 a powdered metallurgy upgrade to 154 cum which results in finer grain size for better sharpening. The blade itself is a 3.5 clip point with a deep stone wash to it to hide scratches and resist rust. It uses an aluminum handle with a series of radial grooves milled in which extend to the bottom of the handle and taper off a nice touch. There's also a lanyard tie-off in. Finally, the number 10 position is dominated by Gerber 6 Auto. The Gerber 6 is another heavy-duty automatic that's favored by the military for its durability and ease of use. If you're used to Gerbers that are cheap Chinese blister pack knives sold in Walmart you throw away when they get dull, 
The six is probably about as different from that as possible. It's not pretty, but it's tough as nails and ready for anything. Handles are 6061 aluminum with a tough anodized coating. Ergonomically, it's got a rock-solid grip with pronounced outward curves that your fingers rest against towards the pivot forming an effective finger guard. Deployment is cool spring automatic with a stout plunge lock, which also features a two-way safety. When pushed towards the button, it locks the blade closed and can also be engaged when the blade is open to prevent the lock from releasing. Like a lot of firearms, the safety switch has a red dot to indicate the safety is disengaged as well. Unusually, a 6 doesn't actually use washers. There's a raised surface integral to the handle that the blade rides against. That's all for today. All the product links in the description down below. We upload videos every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for the upcoming video notification.